This is We All Be News and Radio. Ron Hurd. Get up out of bed. Let's go. Let's go. Ron Hurd. That's the word. Get out of bed. Give me a jingle. My number is 051. Get out of bed. Let's go. Don't be afraid. This is Herb Smith calling you. Herb Smith. All right, I know you're famous and all that kind of stuff, but let's go. Get out of bed. We all be proud to have our brother Wilfred Johnny Hunter, who was the actual cellmate of George Steiny Jr., quite possibly the youngest person ever electrocuted in 20th century American history. How you doing today, sir? I'm okay. Yeah, I want to talk to you because you actually was the cellmate of George Steiny, correct? Yes, I was. So how did this happen? I mean, how did y'all meet? Pardon me? How did you meet George Steiny? Well, I met him, actually, uh, I was in the pride of them bringing him in. And uh, they brought him in, about three or four got people. And uh, I seen this little person. And uh, after they left, you know, I said, what you, what the have you for, kid? You know. And he says to me that uh, they are going to electrocute me. You know, those were his words. You know, I said, what happened? You know. And he said they accused him of, uh, you know, of a crime. You know. So were you shocked to hear that he was accused of this crime of killing two white girls? Yes. He. He. Yes. 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 And he explained to me, you know, you know, through the days that followed, you know, he kept telling me, he says, uh, why, why should they want to kill me for something I didn't do, you know? And uh, he would like, you know, we could be talking, you know, about something else, another, uh, some other subject. And all of a sudden, this would come back, you know, he would mention this, you know. Did he strike you as a killer? I mean, somebody who... No, of course not. Of course okay. not. The kid was so... He was so skinny and small. You know. He he couldn't... Uh, no, no, not at all. Did he actually admit to confessing to the crime? Did he, you know, they say he confessed to the crime. No. No way. No way. No way. He was more concerned. You know that they were gonna put him in the, uh, you know, electric chair and kill him for something that he didn't do. You know, he constantly spoke of this. You know. So how would you describe his emotional state? Like, how was he from day to day? Well, like I say, like sometimes he would be, you know, we'd be talking and everything. And then all of a sudden, this he would begin to. You know, he would reflect, but I, I don't know. Uh, I guess this would come into his mind about what the, what he what he was facing. You know, you know. He, I guess he tried to put it out of his mind, but then it'd come back to him. You know. So, now, okay. Did he, was he? Uh, I know they said he was an artist. Did he draw any pictures while he was in jail? Did he do any of that? Did he draw any pictures? Uh, yeah. Nah, not that I know of, no. Okay, now, why were you in jail? Well, long story. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. I, 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 you know, back in the day, you know, I was just a kid myself, you know? Mm-hmm. And, uh, like, joyriding and stuff, you know? Okay, so, and, like, joyriding. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, <laughs> I borrowed a car, you know? And, uh, so, this cop chased me. Yeah, this was in Sumter. Mm-hmm. This was in Sumter, you know, and, and, and um, I got shot, you know, I got shot and everything, and they took me to the hospital, so when I got well enough, you know, they transferred me from the, from the hospital to the jail. They call it the big jail there, the county jail. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's how I happened to be in the jail when he came in. I wasn't, a, it was just like a kid stuff, you know, well, back then, you know. 
mm-hmm. draw a ride and stuff like that. So was, was a lot of the inmates talking about the kid, who, George Steiner, were they talking about uh, his... Oh, it wasn't that, but it was only another guy, only another person, it was just the three of us. Oh, wow. So it wasn't about two of us, two of me and another person in there when it comes. This was like, this wasn't like a big prison. This was like a kind of jail. Like, they had a little small city jail, and they were like, if the judge, you know, something big, they would put, buy, buy, hold you over, you know. Because the, uh, the solicitor, Solicitor McLeod, he only come through, I think, like once a year or twice a year or something like that. And you'd be in jail for months and months, you know? Mm-hmm. And uh, so they call this the big jail. They call it the big jail, you know? And uh, that, way they would, that, that way they would detain you until the fall term or whatever. And then they were, you would like go to trial. Uh, well, there wasn't many trials, especially for black people back in those days, because it was taken before the judge, and you know, and it will sentence you. You know, the lawyer well, tell you, but take this plea or whatever. You know, you didn't have as much uh, uh, today like it is today. You know, you 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 have someone to more in the open now, or the things that what they were doing back then. You know, so you can actually get a trial or something, you know, but they'll come back there and tell you what to tell you what to do. Not you didn't have no you know, whatsoever. They would tell you, you know, then they would go ahead and put it into work action, you know. Oh, wow. So you remember the, the guy's name who shared the cell, uh, the share the cell with you all, the, the guy's name? The other guy. No, I can't. I don't remember his name now, but uh, yeah, he was a little short guy. I remember him because I I cut his I cut his hair in, in uh George's hair. Oh wow! Okay. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was there and uh, he didn't stay there for long. I think he had some. I think with his wife or something. I don't know something like that. But anyway, uh, we're just the two of us there before George came. So I've been, I've, I've, it was only myself there before they brought this other gentleman in, and then then George came. Now that's interesting because now we look at George Steiny. They say he killed two white women. You there for jaw riding, and the other guys there for domestic uh, domestic issues. So you got all y'all mixed in in one jail, the big jail together. That's fascinating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm mean, actually, did the police treat George differently from you all? Y'all got all got treated the same? Well, the jailer, the jailer, he stayed in the jail, you know, and his wife, his daughter, mm-hmm. you know, uh, Mr. Horns, that was his name, Mr. Horns, I never forget, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, he, uh, you know, would bring the food up, you know, they the, the, had a trustee there. Okay. You know, they had a trustee there. I think he was doing two years. And uh, my mother, you know, she, she she used to send me money, you know, from Brooklyn. She was in New York, you know. Mm-hmm. And I would I would give him a little change, you know, and he would go to, uh, to the store whenever he'd go out to the store because he was a trustee, mm-hmm. you know. And I would buy little things, you know, for, you know, myself and George, you know. And other guy, other person, you know, and and, and, and I don't know if uh, you, you heard of this, uh, uh, but I, I mentioned the, that uh, you heard of what that about uh, the magazine that I was reading, and in the back of the magazine they have a lot of advertisement, you know, like okay. advertising, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, one day I was looking through the magazine, and I had it. And then they had a, like an advertisement that says, "Prepare yourself for the future." You know, like bodybuilding and all that, getting yes, a high, you know, getting an education and educate yourself and whatever. And you know, uh, prepare yourself for the future. And I heard a voice over my shoulder say, "Gee, I don't have a future." You know, hmm. and I slammed the magazine down, man, and got up and walked away. You know, and I said, "Kid, don't talk." You know, you know. And uh, so, I mean, it was really something, you know. It, it was, it was, it was kind of hard, 
even at my young age at that time, you know, I understood what was going on. You know? So at this time, the trial already took place and he was found guilty and he was ready to die. He was waiting to die. Well, he said they were going to electrocute him, so I assume that what it, yeah, I, I, I don't know if he had already went through the process or what, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, I know that when they brought him in and I asked him the question, and he said they are they are going to electrocute me. So I don't know whether that implied that he had already been through the process or what. I do not know. You know, like the month you met, do you remember the month you met Pardon? George? What was the month that you met George in your cell? Oh, oh. I know it was 44. Mm -hmm. I know it was 1944 because... I was look. I was looking at the uh, celebration of uh, of D Day, you know, and I remember that very well. Mm. June the sixth, you know. Yes, sir. So when they took George, they still left me there. I was still in there June the sixth in mm. the jail, you know. And yeah. uh, I can't, I can't remember the exact uh, month or date, you know. Yeah, it's just, it's about right because they electrocuted him around June 16th. They electrocuted him on June 16th, so that's that's correct. So that'd be yeah. right around. So he didn't have any. I do know. I do know that my mother had a friend, and she was from Sumter, and that she was coming to visit. My mother asked her to stop by and visit me. You know, mm -hmm. this lady, yes, my sir. mother's friend. So when she did, uh, she came by and she mentioned the fact that she stopped by the funeral home on her way over to see me. And that they had burnt him to a crisp. You know? Wow. Yeah. That he was, oh, man. She says it was terrible what they did to that kid. You know. Yeah. Mm. They said he was, oh, man. This now, this is what she told me. Wow. Because you know? they had him on display at the funeral home. Oh, wow. Did anybody visit him from his family or friends? No, no, man. Everybody had to get out of town, man. His family. Mm. He, he didn't have no one, nobody. You know, and I saw that they they made a they made a TV movie with uh Louis Gossett Jr. George, Louis Gossett Jr. Man, and I I called NBC. I said, man, what are you doing? That that garbage. I mean, that that wasn't like it. That wasn't like that. It wasn't like that. You know, from what from what the kid told me, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, like uh, even about the brother, you know, the kid brother, mm -hmm. you know. Now the brother, uh, the kid told me that the brother had a problem, and that uh, they contacted someone in uh, Jacksonville, Florida, on mm -hmm. Evergreen Avenue. Evergreen Avenue. I remember the street. I remember the street. I remember. Uh, I've forgotten the address actually, but it was on Evergreen Avenue, Jacksonville, Florida. And he asked me could I could I write a letter because there was a person down there, a, a spiritual person, that helped his brother uh, once, you know. Mm -hmm. And that if I could write to him and explain to him, you know, and ask him could he help him, you know. So that's all he had to reach for. He didn't. Have, he didn't have. He didn't have nothing, man. You know. So wow. I got this trustee. Well, he didn't bring a letter. You know, no letter. But he got like a postcard. You know, at that time they had mm -hmm. any postcards. Mm -hmm. So I wrote a. I wrote a postcard to this gentleman in uh in uh, Jacksonville, Florida, and I explained the situation. You know. And I told him that it, it once helped his brother and wondering if he could, like, under the circumstances, you know, could he uh, please uh, help, could he do something for this kid, you know, that I explained the situation, you know, that he was in. And uh, so I never heard from him, you know. Mm. I never I never got a, a reply. But I did write the postcard for him. Cause that's all he had. That's all he had. Wow. There, you know. You know he was he was reaching for anything. I mean, you know, trying to help him. You know, because his parents, you know, they they had to leave town. Mm -hmm. And I guess everybody that know him had to leave. You know, maybe. You know. Do you think that the uh, 
uh, did the trustee or the jailer, do they believe that he did it? Do, they th- do you think they believe that he did it? Well, they didn't, they didn't, they didn't uh, discuss that, you know, the jailer, you know? Mm-hmm. You know, they don't converse, they didn't converse with uh, black people too much, you know. Man. You know. Mm-hmm. And, uh, no, nah, uh, only the three of us that was in jail. And I would talk to the trustee, but it would be on other, you know, different things, you know. Right. No, he didn't get in, no, they didn't get into that, no. I mean, did you fear for your life being in the same jail cell with George Stiney, like a field play You know, I reflect back in on retro, in retrospect. I said, "Oh wow, you know." I, I think of it, you know, and I think of Cheney and uh, I think of Cheney. You know, the three civil rights uh, workers, Jerry uh, Cheney. Memphis. Yeah, it's Warner. I, think, I yeah. think of that how they went in there and got those kids, got those kids out of there. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that 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 hit me, but not until years later. I didn't give it a thought at the time. No. Wow. Wow. I didn't give it a thought at the time, but uh, it could have happened. It could have happened because due to the atmosphere there, you know, and due mm-hmm. to how the people felt at that time, you know. How did the people they were, feel? They were taking yeah. them from place to place. I understand later. Mm. You know. And uh, they were trying to hide him and whatever. Huh? Wow. How did the black people feel about it at that time? How do you think the black people, they feel like he did it? He got a fair trial? Well, during that period, uh, they didn't, no, it was the same, you know, back then. You know, we feel, feel that none of us black, especially black, you know, you didn't get a, you didn't get the due process, no. Yeah, yeah, they felt that way. Yes. I know. I, you, you it think was, was that whom mm-hmm. I saw? You know, afterward, later, you know. Mm-hmm. I spoke to. You know. Do you think he was strange that he didn't get a? That his lawyer did not file an appeal on his behalf. That one, the people was not filed. Pardon? That, do you do you find it strange or unusual that his lawyer did not file an appeal on his behalf? after he was sentenced to death. Yeah. Yeah, he didn't have no one. The only person he had, I'm going to tell you how the system worked there and then. Mm-hmm. They had a solicitor. He he would go around the different counties, you know. He he had a jurisdiction. His jurisdiction was, I think, was Williamsburg County. You know, that's King Street. Mm-hmm. That taken in King Street. That taken in Sumter County. And... And, and that, 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 that he was like a DA, like you would call a district attorney, like, you know? Mm-hmm. And he was the one, the prosecutor. And when he would go, like, like a court is in session, like, 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 like I say, they only be in session, like, maybe once a, once a year or twice a year or something like that, mm-hmm. you know? And they didn't have what you call, like, a regular everyday thing. You know, everyday court or something like that. Okay. And what he would do, he would go around and look at the cases, I assume, and then he would, like, uh, tell the judge, you know, recommend this or recommend that, you know. And when you go up before the judge, I mean, you didn't have much say, you know. Mm. You didn't have much say because they were running the show. You know, they were deciding what, what you should get, what you should not get, whatever. That that the way it was that back then. You know. Oh, so wow. as far as appeal, man, you didn't hear nothing about about an appeal back then. You know, no, no one. He had nobody. He he was just he just was there, man, by himself, like. So I guess that's why he he stuck around me. Uh, uh, a lot, you know, because uh, sometimes he would try to have a little humor, you know, and 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 things he would say, you know, like 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 he he told me one time he says he says he said Johnny I said what kid. He said, he said, 
says, uh, he said, when they electrocute me, he said, I'm coming back and haunt you, you know? <laughs> and mm-hmm. I said, kid, I said, don't talk that way. And I hit my hand on the wall, and I still, my middle knuckle on my on my left, I'm left-handed, and on my left, I'm looking at it now. Mm-hmm. It's still there, swollen, swollen up. Mm. It's still it's still there, you know, from back there where I bang, where I hit the wall, you know, with my left hand, you know. The knot, the knot is still there on my on my left hand, on my middle knuckle. Wow. You know, so that show you like sometimes he, you know, he just he said when they electrocute me, he said I'm coming back and haunt you, you know. You know, I guess just to get away from you know. And then we'll get back to other things, you know, talking, playing cards, stuff like that, walking around in circles, you know, mm. yes. How big was the cell y'all shared? No, it was like a open area, and then they had like the cells, like they would lock you in at night, but on the, in the, during the daytime, they would open the cells so you can go in. In and out, you know, like if you had to go to the bathroom or whatever or something like that, you know. So they were like, it was on the three or four cells in that in that section, you know. But they had an area there where they had a bench, you know, outside, you know, and a little table. And you could come out like during the day, but at night, you know, they'll lock you in. Oh, wow. So you can walk around in circles, get a little extra, get your exercise and stuff like that. So, but I used to do this by club. I mean, you never forgot about him. He might not be hunting you, but you, you he left an impression on you that you still talk about him seven years yeah, later. Seven years later. Yeah, yeah, it gets to me sometimes, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, sometimes I, I, I think about it, you know. I think I, I I think about it in the time that the thing that happened to uh, uh, Emma Till, you mm-hmm. know, things like that, you know. But I got involved, you know. I got involved in a whole lot of things, you know, uh, during my life, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, I got I'm, I, I did a lot of marching here in New York. I did a lot of. Uh, I don't want to mention it, but, uh, you know, like, uh, local, you know, in the neighborhood, you mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. And now, at my age now, you know, I go and I'm on call from the senior citizen places. Like, I go down to uh, land land uh, management or whatever, landlord trying to evict the senior citizens or something. Mm. They'll call me up, Mr. Hunter. Are you busy? Uh, will you be available Thursday or uh, Wednesday or whatever? Uh, we would like for you to uh, go, out, uh, go down to housing court with, you know, whoever it was, you know? Mm. And I would go down to housing court and uh, try to help out, you know, help out. So I'm on call. other words, I'm on call like uh, different, you know, senior uh, uh, centers. Here in New York, you know. Wow! So you 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 are an activist. No, I I you know I I don't know if as that as a, as a result of of you know back mm. those years or what you know, but I know through my life you know that uh, I've 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 uh, uh, did a lot of things you know mm-hmm. that ordinarily I guess I wouldn't have you know. When did you get out of jail? You remember when the I year? Of, yeah. Huh? huh? Do you remember the year you got out of jail? Like when did you get out? When did I get out? Yes, sir. I got out back in the. It was still in the. What is it? The forties? Yeah. Yeah, because uh, then I came. My mother got me out of the south right away. I heard that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got you up to Brooklyn, huh? I, I can remember. <laughs> I can remember my uncle, you know, bought, that bought me a little outfit that I had on my little trench coat, and I had my little suitcase, and, 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 uh, and uh, when 
we got to uh, Washington, you know, that's the Mason-Dixon line. Right. You know? Mm-hmm. I know they still they still had uh, what you call like uh, black and white waiting rooms back then. Yes, sir. You know, at that time, you know? So mm-hmm. when I got to Penn Station, you know, uh, later I learned it was Penn Station because I didn't know anything about New York or whatever <laughs> then at that time. Yes, sir. And, uh, and, and the high ceilings, man, I'm looking all up, and my coke, man, from the from the smoke and stuff, from the engine, the train in, engine, you mm-hmm. know, because black people used to have to sit up front, you know, get all that stuff that's coming out of the engine and yes, stuff, sir. you know. And But at Washington, you know, you can go and sit in the place you want once you've got fast Washington, C.C., because mm. they call that, I think they call it at that time the Mason Dixon line. Yeah, you know. But Mason Dixon line. So mm-hmm. I know I heard uh, someone say, I heard a voice say, there he is. You know, with my mother, my stepfather, they were looking all over for me. And you know what I was doing? What are you doing? I, <laughs> I was like a guy just come to town on Saturday <laughs> out of the country. Yeah. And I was just looking. I was just looking up at the high ceiling and stuff, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm walking around, man, in like a daze, like. I was just looking, I'm just looking up at the high ceiling and how the people walking fast. Look like everybody was in the rush, man. You know what I'm saying, you know? Mm. Then I heard a voice say, there he is. And it was my mother. And my stepfather, you know, they met me at the train. Then they took uh, the subway ride to uh, Brooklyn. That's where they were living, you know. Let me ask you this. you think you would have survived without any type of family support in jail? Pardon? Would you have survived without any family support in jail? Like, would you have survived, you think? Would would he would have survived or me? No, you, you. Would I would I have to would I have to buy? Yeah, without would any I, family support. Uh, yeah, I guess so. Because my mother, you know, my family, you know, it was in New York and stuff, and I was down there. I, matter of fact, I was kind of alone myself, mm-hmm. but not like his situation. Right. Know? Yeah. So my family was far away, you know. So you met, so you never met his family before. I know he has a brother Charles that lives in Brooklyn, but I you never met his family before. I seen him on TV. Mm-hmm. That could that could have been the brother that uh, uh, he told me about. Yeah, he's a pastor up there. And, uh, he's, yeah, he's a pastor. Yes, sir. He was a pastor, but he's uh, either retired or whatever. But he oh, he's yeah. in the ministry. Yeah, I'm getting back to Roy Goss. Uh, I mean. Uh, uh, Lou Gossip Jr. Um, Carolina Skeletons, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, the uh, movie. Skeleton, uh, skeleton, uh, Carolina Skeleton or something like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, it said that the brother was in the Army. He came out of the Army all gun, gun hole and all that stuff and people rattling around the kids and stuff like that. That wasn't true. That was not true. Mm. He didn't have anyone. He didn't have anyone, man. He, he snuck him out there. I could have been the last black person that he spoke to. Wow. You know, because when they came and got him, you know, you know, when they came and got him, man, I, I, I can't describe how it was, you know. I just, you know, and I look at him, man, you know, put my hand on the shoulder, uh, you know, and the mm-hmm. other guy, and um, he just say, bye, you know, like that, mm. you know. He said bye? He did. He says, you know, the way he said it, you know, mm. when they came for him, you know. Uh, took him away. Next thing I know, when the lady came and told me, even the jailer, a trustee, didn't even mention anything about it. Mm. You know? Wow. This is like 
Yeah. Eleven years before Emmett Till. I mean, you talk about the body being burnt, you know, recognition and whatnot. Pardon? I mean, this is like 11 years before Emmett Till happened down in Mississippi. Uh, well, another 14-year-old kid, you know, and you you talk about how the body was so burnt up beyond recognition. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, this, uh, yeah, this lady, Miss, uh, Miss Daisy, yeah, her name, she, she told me, she said, oh, she, she was upset, she was highly upset, yes. Now, I heard, yeah, I heard the reason why he was electrocuted, why the, the governor didn't stay the execution or commute his sentence to a life sentence was because he was informed that, uh, he allegedly raped one of the girls. Well, I wouldn't know about that, no, because he didn't, you know, all he, all he would talk about is innocent. Okay. His innocent, yes. Yes, that's all he would speak on, his innocent, his innocent. And he would know, he, he didn't understand why, why they would want to kill him for something he didn't do, you know? Mm. He would say, why, Johnny, why, you know? Would you describe him as a? How would you describe his, his intelligence? Was he was he very smart or was he kind of slow? How do you describe him in terms of his intelligence? Well, he was like more, more or less like the average kid in some respect, you know. Mm-hmm. He more or less like uh, he wasn't like you know like uh, there wasn't any. Different, like, you know, well, you mean, like, uh, whether or not he would, like, uh, I, guess I know you, what you mean, I know what you mean when you say slow, I mm-hmm. mean, like, uh, oh, he seemed to have a lot of his faculties, you know, he didn't, you know, he didn't seem to be out of touch or anything like that. Okay, do you, do you talk about, like, uh, participating in the search party for the girls, do you talk about that at all? I know some sources say he actually participated in the search party looking for the girls. A lot of things, you know, like I tell you, like, 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 I guess he just didn't want to, you know, the thing that he would say. Uh, I, I think he was focused more on, on, on what they're doing to him. Mm. That overshadowed most of everything else during the conversation, you know. Mm-hmm. But he could have, I don't know. Could have, you know. Because he wasn't like loose and just let out. Yeah, I went searching with him. I did this, I did that, and whatever, and stuff like this. It was a serious matter, sir. You mm-hmm. know? It was a very serious matter and stuff like that, so. That's how I look at it, you know, because in the beginning, you know, like sometimes, you know, like I would like, you talking about mood change, my, I would get like, I'd say, wait a minute, you know, then even at that age, at my age, you know, I, 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 I think, uh, you know, it began to, but it didn't, it didn't, it didn't really hit, hit until sometime now, it's hard to believe. Mm. You know, that they would do something like that to 13 and a half year old kid. You know? Yes, sir. Because I, I remember years later, you know, the Daily News up here in New York, uh, they used to do a feature in, in, on the Sunday papers, every Sunday paper. So a few years, a few years ago, uh, they had an article in their uh, uh magazine section that you should do on Sundays. And they had a they they featured him that the youngest person that was ever electrocuted in in America. Mm. You know? Mm-hmm. And I looked at it and I re, that brought back, you know, a whole lot, you know? Yeah, that brought back a whole lot of memories and stuff. Was there like a was there a lot of media coverage during that time? Was did it get any media coverage? Like well, I was in, I, w- I was inside, you know, so I didn't know what was going on outside. Mm-hmm. So my only contact was the time when you know that lady come and she brought me, you know, she filled me in on a whole lot of things that was happening out outside, you know, mm. because I didn't even know what was going on. 
you know. And like like you said, like you say, they could have came in there and got all three of us, took us out, you know. Because uh, I assume that was, that how the atmosphere, depending on what was said and what they accuse him of, you know. Uh, I can understand, you know, I, I can, you know, understand how the, uh, the atmosphere was outside, mm-hmm. you know. Because I understand that these people had to leave their house. You know, they had to just, just go, you know. Mm. Yeah, they had to just go, you know. A lot of personal things, you know, he told me, you know, like he liked it, uh, he liked the country music, he says, you know. Because uh, back in those days, they used to have, like, the Grand Ole Opry. Mm-hmm. And he said he used to listen to that on the radio. Mm. And uh, things like that, you know. Oh, wow. Did y'all have a radio in the cell? You know, at jail? No, he was telling me that, 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 uh, when he was out, you know. Okay. He was telling me, like, his, you know, his life's a personal thing, you know. Like, yeah. he was going to school, he was in school. Mm-hmm. You know. And he would take the cow, they had a, you know, he'd come home, he'd take the cow out, the graze, you know, and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. Now, I had heard uh, reading online, you know, they put a lot of stuff out there that he was supposedly a bully towards white people, like white kids were no, afraid of him. Oh, no way. <laughs> they put that on, online? Oh, yeah. Some people said he bullied them. Like, days before, uh, one lady said that he threatened to kill her and her friends if they ever came around. Oh, come on. <laughs> come on. Know what they say, sir? I promise you, <laughs> Mr. Harvey. Oh, man. <laughs> No, no, that wasn't his. That wasn't his makeup, man. Mm-hmm. That was not his makeup. The kid was like, <laughs> "Oh man." Mm-hmm. Like if you were seeing, you would think you'd be taking advantage of somebody, you know, or something like that. You know? Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. That that. I could even a bully a little kid like that. No, no, no way. Well, they did that. I know, you know, well, there's a reason for it, you know. Yes, sir. Yeah, there's a reason for it. The he, kid can't, he can't answer for himself. That's right. No, he can't answer for himself. Did he talk about having a girlfriend outside? Did he have a girlfriend or a girl he was interested in? Uh, uh, well, I think sometimes we should discuss, you know, things, you know, you know, like movies or whatever. Mm-hmm. That he had seen, you didn't see too many because I guess where he was living, you know, they didn't have a movie house or whatever. But he was living at Pinewood in Pinewood, South Carolina, one time. Then they moved from there up into a, a little town near Manning, South Carolina, somewhere mm-hmm. in there. Yeah, and Akulu, where his folks were, the uh, Akulu too. Pardon? The Akulu, this name of the town. Yeah, 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 mm-hmm. yeah, right, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, that's where they uh So so you 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 from Memphis? Yes sir, I'm from Memphis. I was born in Knoxville but I was raised in Memphis. Oh yes, I was in Knoxville. You know where where uh Vian and Central? I have no idea. I was born there, I wasn't raised there. I was born in Knoxville. Oh, I see. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, uh years ago. Uh you know how they <laughs> I didn't use a good bit. I was a little kid. I put my ears up, <laughs> and, and I went to Knoxville. Mm-hmm. You know, like on a project they were working down down there during the early part of the war. Mm-hmm. Yeah, during the early part of the war. Yeah, and we used to ride in those army those army buses and stuff. They took us on cross on a ferry mm. to this project that they, you know. It could have been that thing, that movie that Montgomery Cliff played in. I don't know. It could mm. have been about uh, the, the something there, about Tennessee, the Tennessee something. I don't know. The Tennessee Valley Authority or something like yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah, TVA? Yeah, mm-hmm. I could have been involved in that and didn't even know it. <laughs> yeah, they, they, you know, they're good at doing that, right? That Tuskegee experiments and everything. Our government good at that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
yeah. say you one thing and doing another thing to you. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because they used to come and take us on old buses, and, mm-hmm. uh, and, uh, and I know they 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 they, 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 uh, they were saying that they were going to take us out. You know the uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the white people you know, mm-hmm. were coming into town, right? And bus and stuff. So they were waiting for us one night, you know. And uh, but nothing happened. Nothing happened. Wow. Uh, yeah, Knoxville, Tennessee. I was a little kid. And I can remember they had a long line of people uh, going, waiting to go into, going to the theater because you know what's on the bill? The movie that was playing? What, what was that movie? Sergeant Yaw. No, oh, he's from I Tennessee. Think, I think he was from Tennessee. <laughs> yeah, he was from Tennessee, yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, uh, yeah, well that, mm-hmm. that movie that movie was uh, was uh, playing. Wow. These people was, man, was, as far as you could see, man, they were a, a long line of, and you know something else? They were all white. <laughs> of course they were, yeah. They like the great white hopes on the screen. You know how they do yeah, it. They were in all boxing white. in the movies, the great white hopes. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Let me ask you, like, why speak out now about George Steining? Why, why come forth now with all this information? About why what you come know about? forth? Yes, sir. Why this time? Because... I I I I I uh I happen to see uh this 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 this, this black uh, uh uh lady that has a com a common uh, on MSNBC she has a show okay so there were three there was about two or three people black guys on there and they said they were gonna do a movie or something. A play. I think it was a play, right? I know you're talking about. Uh, something like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, so after I got to, I got onto the tail end of the show. I caught the tail end of the show. Then I said, oh, wow. You know. And uh, the first time I called I call NBC, you know, to, uh, to tell them about that, that, that movie that just went off, you know, that I watched. You know, a, a South Carolina cl- uh, skeleton, that's what it was. Mm-hmm. So anyway, now getting back to the time, the second time, well, like what her name? What this girl name comes on four o'clock? Or, well, Cameron Hall or Cameron, Cameron Hall? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what this is. They yeah, were yeah. on her show. Mm-hmm. So I called, and they put me through, and I got her answering service. She said, "I'm sorry, I can't speak you right now. However, leave your name and number. You know." Mm-hmm. But she never got back to me, you know. Mm. So the next time, the next time, uh, I saw they showed a picture of him. I believe they showed they were interviewing someone on TV. Okay, they were interviewing someone on TV and uh, MSNBC. Mm-hmm. And I called and I left a message, you know. Mm-hmm. And they got back to me. Mm. They got back to me, yes. And I was interviewed. They came up and interviewed me, you know, and everything. Yeah, I, I saw the interview. That one got me uh, contact. I saw it today, actually. And yeah, I'm glad I got a chance to connect with you. The guy that did me. Did you saw the one where I was walking? Or saw, I oh, well, you were walking, yet. yeah. I saw the one you were walking. I haven't seen that yet. No, I really look mine. It's so long. The guy's father sent a, a copy of it to, the, to me, you know. Because it was January this year, right? He interviewed uh, you back. Did he interview you this year? Uh, When was that? Was uh, that January of this been. year? It could have been. I don't know what it shows, I think. I think it shows January of this year. That's yeah, I know all of them. Uh, plus, they got some people there in Manning supposed to be fighting this case, too. Yeah, they they did the trial oh. earlier in, in January. They did the trial in yeah. January, and they, they haven't ruled on it yet. But but they did the trial because uh, they called me up. Uh, I spoke to one of the lawyers. I got a letter here, you know, and I signed. I signed affidavit. I signed. Uh, I took it to my bank, you know, mm-hmm. and I had it notarized, you mm-hmm. know. Notary and sign and everything, and I sent it back. I sent it down there to them. Yeah, I saw an article that said they got your letter. Yeah. Huh? Pardon me? 
They got a statement from you. Yeah, I saw. I see some articles online that said that you gave them a statement. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. Online, huh? <laughs> yeah, everything. I mean, that's how I found your number. I went on the white pages online. <laughs> Everything's uh-huh. online. I went. On, I went to the white pages online to yeah. find your number, and I was lucky. Yeah. Cause that's how I found his brother's number a couple years ago, Charles Tiny, uh, his younger brother. It looks like him. Uh, I found his number through the white pages, and I talked to him. And, oh, you uh, did? Yeah. That's how I interviewed him. I, I put it on. It was like around Columbus Day, how 2011. Did you my, how did you get my number? I went to the white pages online. Oh, the white pages? Yes, sir. Oh, oh, I see. Yeah, it's, York, a, yeah, it's a small world. Yes, sir, it's a small world after all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I was glad that you spoke out and that you speak in truth to power because people need to hear this side of the story. Because I, I said, like, I'm talking to other people as well connected to the case. Uh, later on this week, and I'm just trying to give people a, a different view of what's going on. And it's so hard to yeah, do well, sometimes. What, I, what I'm saying is I have no reason to say it one way or the other. Mm-hmm. You know, the kid is dead, he's gone. I'm only speaking what was told to me. And I do an hour conversation, you know. Yes, sir. And stuff like that. And how he looked at the time and how he... Uh, his thought. Sometimes I guess he tried to get him out, you know, to me, and he, I was the only one that he could confide, confide in, you know, could talk to, mm-hmm. you know, because it looked like everything. He would ask me questions. He would come over to me, you know, and I'd be walking around. We'd be walking around in circles and stuff, you know, in the little mm-hmm. space that we had there, you know. And uh, uh, when they got him, when they left, man, when they, you know, me and the guy, you know, he went and sat on the bench, I went and sat on the bench, and there wasn't a word between us, you know. Mm. We didn't talk, we didn't say anything, you know. Yeah. This thing is amazing. But, yeah, go ahead, I'm sorry. Pardon? I'll you know, go it, was like, yeah. it was like, a, like, a, like something, I don't know. Uh, like all of a sudden you have some, and then all of a sudden you look and it's gone. You know, mm. it's, uh, there was something missing. You know, but he, you know, and and and, and what it feel like to be in a situation where where you can't you you can't do anything. You can't even. You know that that what that what made it worse. That what that what really got to me. Mm-hmm. You know that that I couldn't I couldn't reach out I couldn't lash out I couldn't you know that was that what really got to me. And I guess in in a in a way, at one stage of my life growing up, I guess I kind of act that up act 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 it out. You know on that mm-hmm. you know one period of my life. You know mm-hmm. you know looking back on it. You know. Because I felt so helpless, you know. I felt even that at, at that age, you know. I look and I look. I look at a man when they were taking body. He 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 just said the way he said. He said, "Bye." Just like you know? that. Wow. And and, 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 and and it was like it was sad, man. It was sad. Even even the. You know, like sometime uh, like the trustee, you know, when he would bring up the food and stuff, you know, we have a little talk. We made a couple of words between us. But there was no no talking. There was nothing. No one said anything. Mm-hmm. No, no one said anything. No. Wow. How old was you like? <laughs> and even though he was in there and he was a trustee, but I think he felt it too. Mm. The trustee, you know? That's a, and he was black and stuff, you know. I think he felt it too. Oh, the trustee was black. Yeah, the trustee was black. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. James, the name was James. James. Okay. Yeah. Wow, I mean, that's amazing. Wow. Yeah, yeah. It was. It was like when he brought up the food. You know. He didn't say anything. He just. And Mr. Owens, he was the jailer, mm-hmm. you know, 
and uh, he would hardly come up. He would just come up and and uh, you know check open the door or whatever for the, for the for the trustee. And he would stand there, stay there, and then he would go on back out. You know, he would go on back out. Oh wow! But uh, like I said, Solicitor uh, Solicitor McLeod. That was his name, man. He was well known. He was well known all over the South, South Carolina at least, you know. Yes, sir. He was well known, man. Mm. And he was well known for his black people jokes, too. I bet. Wow. Yeah, yeah, all that stuff, yeah, yeah. So how old were you when you was in jail with George? How old was you? How old was I? Yes, sir. I uh, I was older than he was. Mm-hmm. I was uh, I don't know. I was in my teens. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I was in my teens. Hmm. Wow. So that That's wow. Seventy, seventy some years, seventy years ago. Yes, sir. That's a long That's time. Years ago. Yeah, you thought you thought you like it yesterday for you though. I'm very fortunate. I'm very fortunate to have uh, have my fuck my faculties. Yeah, I was thinking that you really like you really got great power recall, man. I mean, you must get yeah, a lot yeah. of good exercising that's, and eating the right one food. Thing I have, yeah, I have. <laughs> You know, that's one thing I have, yeah. Yeah, wow. It's like it happened yesterday, like yesterday, yesterday. Yeah, it does. It's, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> the way you recall it is amazing. What was yeah. his favorite card game? You say he played, y'all played cards. I traveled. Matter of fact, I just came back from down south to my my mother's uh, sister's funeral. Oh, wow. Yeah, uh, a couple of weeks ago, yeah. How old was she when she passed? Uh, she was 80-something, 80 80 something. Oh wow! She was yeah, oh uh, yeah. She was like yeah, ninety. The last last uh, the girls on my mother's side. Mm. Yeah. How, how long ago since your mom passed? Oh, uh, my mother passed back in the seventies. Oh wow! How old was she? She was quite old. I never knew, but you know what they used to say? Uh, like my girlfriend, my my my, my girlfriend's uh. Used to tell me, said, "Wow, so you have a young mother. Your mother looks young, you know." <laughs> they, they used to be surprised when they would see my mother. Matter of fact, like, 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 for me, for a long while, for a long while, they would, they would tell, they didn't believe how old I was. You yeah. know, I would tell them, and they would say, "Nah, you're not that old. Nah, nah, unbelievable, <laughs> unbelievable." And and, and, and and one time I went to the doctor, and I think it was examination. And then when the guy came in the in the in the uh, waiting room, he called him uh, Hunter Wilford, Wilford Hunter. You know, and I got up, and he looked at me. <laughs> he cussed me. He said, and he was talking like he was talking to himself. You know, we were walking back to the office. He said, unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what's what's the, what's the secret to longevity then? Like the hell? Of, I don't, you know, I man. don't know. I don't know. I <laughs> I try to stay active, you know. Yes, sir. Stuff, you know, and I do. But uh, I have a very good doctor, you know. And I, I'm a, I'm a, I, I go to a very good hospital, and one of the best in the country, uh, Presbyterian. Mm. I spell you may have heard of it because that's where all 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 the people go. Mm-hmm. You know the the uh, big names. Dow Strawberry was there. Rudy Giuliani. Okay, yeah, the best of the best, best, right? And all, oh, all wow. the high, yeah, people come from other countries here. Oh wow! But uh, yeah, they have very good doctors and very good, you know, facilities. You know. Well, let me ask you this. I mean, like you said, you, like, you, you said you've been around, you travel a lot. Uh, are you surprised that America now, I mean, you look at it now, you know, you got, a, I guess, a black president, and you look at all the things we have gotten. What do you think about racism today? 
But when we think about all this change. It's still here. It's still there. Mm-hmm. But it's like, 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 what they say, like, like, in the old days, like in the South, they used to show it. Mm-hmm. But like in the North, they didn't, they didn't show it, but it was there. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. Uh, it's there. It's, it's there, but like, you know, especially... Especially what they were doing to the sky. Look like they're beating up on this man and Fox, man. I'm up here with Fox, you know, TV. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I felt like going down there and be a one man crusade down there in front of, you know, <laughs> uh, and Fox. And they got a, they got people on there. I don't want to mention the name, you know, mm-hmm. uh, like on that channel, man. On the Fox channel, you may have heard about, it. you know, yes, how they yes, beat up on Obama, man. Oh, yeah. And every day, every day, man. Look at twenty four seven they on the man. They are. <laughs> they won't give them credit for anything. They won't give them credit uh-huh. for anything. No, they don't give them for nothing, man. The guy and they got people down there in 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 in, in, in our state, South Carolina. Mm-hmm. That, that, uh, they they want like give them on uh, the 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 the, the health care that they need. You know they they don't want to give them Medicaid. You know. Mm. Yeah, that that governor down there, that woman. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm surprised there's little like woman governor down there. <laughs> yeah, well, he, wow. Part Indian or something too. From what I heard, I don't know. Mm. You know. That's good. Well, you know, they say some things change and some things remain the same, huh? Some things remain the same. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All, all, one, I, all one have to do is just try to make the very best of it. You know, and go on with his life and try to. Get more what you know, what time one have left, you know, just enjoy the what's the you know. Yes, sir, I understand. Also you said you and George would play cards. What was his favorite card game? Well, we used to play different times, you know. Like uh I don't know, I don't <laughs> I don't know, 'cause a lot of times look like we'll be concentrating on the cards and other times our mind won't wouldn't be on the cards, you know. Mm-hmm. It come back to it'll always come back to to what he was accused of, and then therefore, you know, it always would come back to that. You know, always, no matter we could be going along, getting along, and all of a sudden, you know. Wow. And then sometimes he would be sitting down. And, uh, you know, then he'll jump up, you know, and uh, start talking, you know, mm. everything. Whoa. But he was such a little person, you know, mm-hmm. I don't think he could have, uh, I don't think, I don't, he couldn't have did that, no. Well, a brother that Johnny. Was, that wasn't his makeup, you know, that wasn't, that wasn't his makeup, you know. Well, sir, well, I want to just thank you once in the sake of the time to talk to me. I know that you had, you know, other things you could be doing right now. I'm so blessed that you took the time to talk to me about your life experiences yeah, as well as about have, your friend, uh, George. Yeah, I have a, I have a cousin here in Memphis. I, I mean, he, yeah, he lives in Memphis. He works for a big company down there. He, okay. Uh, yeah, uh, we, uh, I met him. For the first time at a, at another cousin's funeral here in Maryland, that I went down to Baltimore to 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 her funeral, mm-hmm. and I met I met him and he gave me his card. Man, he worked for a high one of those high tech one of those places down there in uh, Memphis. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So so what you doing down there doing research or? Well, yeah, I'm doing research. I got. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I was saying research or do a little. You get a little background or something. Yes, sir. Why? Well, yeah, I do. I like. I, I'm. I really love doing research. I, I had a nonprofit that I founded and started, but one of my things is media, controlling the media to tell our story, black people's story, because what's yeah. happening is that our side of the story is not being told, but when it does get told, we're not controlling it. Now, that's my that's concern. A, you, oh, you were in front. You were in front of the move. Yeah, they put you in front there. You yeah, know? but that just like in the old days, you know, mm-hmm. like uh, in the neighborhood, in our neighborhood, you you, you know. Mm-hmm. As a matter of fact, 
<laughs> I don't want that, no. No, you don't have it either, man. The way you recall stuff. The way you recall stuff is amazing to me. Oh, yeah, a, yeah, yeah. I can go way back. You know, I can remember. Oh, man, I can, I, I can remember things like a lot of things. I can go way back. That's right. That's one well, thing I do have, you know. That's right. Well, Brother Hunter, I want to thank Go well, I'm sorry. Huh? I just want to thank you for taking us to talk to us again. I'll definitely yeah, be in touch so, soon. So, so I, where, I look forward to connecting with you. Where's hmm? your headquarters? Oh, in Memphis, Tennessee, but I, I'll be I'll be going up to New York City again soon. I, I'm gonna connect with you. I want to meet you in person. Okay, good. Yeah, you know, you don't know a guy named Ralph Pointer up there, right? You know Ralph Pointer by any chance? Who? Ralph Pointer, who's married to Lance Stewart, the lawyer. Oh, the, yes, yes. Ralph Pointer, yeah, you know him? Ralph Pointer. Yeah, he's where, married to Lance Stewart. Where, where he reside at? In, uh, he's a, he's a, he's, I think he's in Brooklyn, but he's married to Lance. He did work back in the day, community organizing in Harlem and stuff like that. Yeah, I got to know him because I have friends that, 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 that know a lot of people, you know, celebrities mm -hmm. and whatever, and uh, lawyers, lawyers because she was involved. You know, in a whole lot of uh, that type of work. Yes, sir. Well, you know, definitely. Well, we could make again soon. I just look forward to talking yeah. to you again. And thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. Yeah, yeah. And your name again? Our name is Ron. Ron heard like I heard the cattle. <laughs> I know you're going to laugh. Everybody laugh at that. That's good. Uh, <laughs> move them out. I appreciate yeah, that. I think that's day by day. And mule train and all that stuff. Yes, so, sir. So now, may I ask you something, sir? Yes. Now, you said you're putting together what? I'm doing a broadcast on Sunday about what happened to George Sterney in honor of the 70th anniversary. Yeah, boy, I wish I could get that up there. You couldn't send me a tape. Yeah, I'll send you a copy. Yeah, because I interviewed his brother, too, a couple of you. I'll send you a copy of that, too. Yeah, I got a call. I got a call, uh, uh, Mr. Todd, and I got a call, Mr. Potter. He's with NBC also. I know a lot of those people there. And I oh, yeah. got a call out, and I got to call the lawyers because they never, you know, I, I told them to keep me informed as to the result of what happened. So you said this is still going on? Or yeah, it's not it ruling, no, sir. Because they're going to do a vigil at the Capitol in Columbia so supporters because they have not heard anything from the judge. And I heard the judge will offer some type of political position. So I don't know. You know, there's always politics going on. Yeah, and I heard also that they want to they wanna, they wanna give them something, but they don't want to accept that. Right. Want, I mean, if he wanna, didn't do it, yeah, wanna, part of me, uh, you did uh, something. They want a complete exoneration. They want a complete exoneration, you know. Right. Yeah, they don't want no, no uh, you know. That makes sense. Yeah. That's right. They mean, like, it's like he's guilty or something, you got a pardon. A pardon means yeah, he's yeah. guilty or but something. This kid, this kid, he was not guilty, man, you know. Yes, sir. You know, and, and, and for a little while there, I mean, uh, I'm sorry about this, but, uh, what happened to circumstances, but thinking back to him, you know, looking at him, you know, for a little while, you know, I'm thinking about how he was. Before I knew his circumstances and stuff, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, like I just thought he was just another person that they were bringing into jail, you know. Right. And uh, and I would, I was, what I was uh, went through my mind. Why they have a kid so a person so young? Mm -hmm. You know, that's why I said, and I always knew the word kid. You mm -hmm. know. I want to tell you a funny thing happened the other day. I was out on Broadway, and mm -hmm. uh, you know the guys was out there. And so two, two kids, a boy and a girl, I assume it was a sister, a little sister. So they come around, you know, and I'm standing there. So the other guy, they didn't buy any candy. You know, he was selling like cookies or candy. I thought it was candy. Mm -hmm. So he passed by, and you know. So you know what I did before I knew it? Before I knew it, it came out of my mind. I said, hey, kid, <laughs> mm -hmm. what you got there? You know, come over. And he came over to me, and I got a couple of what he had. And then the other guys, man, they stopped buying. Everybody stopped buying. <laughs> and you know, and you mm -hmm. know what I thought about? I thought about the time 
When I when I asked George, I said, I said, uh, hey, what the what the have you for, kid? You know, what the mm-hmm. have you for, kid? You know, that's the word. You know, that's what I uh, I was using up to back then. You know, the slang like. Right. You know? mm-hmm. Yeah. And I thought about him the other day. Now you call, you know, and and wow. Yeah, man. You, know. you say you 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 don't forget him, right? <laughs> Uh-huh. <laughs> he told you you'll never forget him. He'll hunt you in a good way, oh, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he man. said that, you know. <laughs> I said, man. I said, man. I said, man. Uh, uh, uh. But the but the thing that I really think about when uh, he told me when I heard that voice, uh, it was like you know, like. Prepare yourself for the future. You know, mm-hmm. all that and stuff. And then I heard that voice said, gee, I don't have a future. You know? And that's when I slammed the magazine down, man, and, and, and walk away, man, you know. It, it, mm-hmm. it hit my and hit my hand. You know, I still that's got very that, powerful, that I still got that, that, that knot there on my left hand where I hit the wall. You know? Yes, sir. Well, Mr. Hunter, I want to thank you. It's too bad, man. It's too bad that I didn't have anyone that could come to his rescue, could give him real due process at that time. Yes, sir. A fair trial because I definitely don't believe that he had. This is a trial that didn't last very long. Yeah, like Um, this is a two-hour trial, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And they didn't call, they didn't have, uh, I don't know what lawyer he had, but... uh, it was appointed to him by the court, but the lawyer didn't, you know, put up a defense. Uh, yeah, well, you yeah. know, he already was, the fix was already in. Exactly. You know, because uh, it wasn't going to find him, you know. They wasn't going to find him innocent, you know that, you know. They were running hard. What they did, they just want to make it kind of look good, and they're fortunate that, 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 that the authorities, I guess they probably wanted to get him too, wanted to do what the other people wanted to do to him, but... Since he was in the public eye at the time, gotten in the public eye, I guess they had to go through the procedure, you know? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, so, uh, uh, so, uh, so-called uh, trial and stuff like that. But everything was already fixed. Everything was already, uh, you know, to be what, 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 it, whatever. But I would like to... Uh, yeah, I would like to hear <laughs> hear that. And, and uh, the uh, the other person, uh, Todd Johnson from MSNBC, he's supposed to send me a a tape. But one tape, man, she had an accident. Mm-hmm. You know, I had an accident. I had a a, a a my face. You know, mm-hmm. my face. And he told me. And, 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 and I saw myself in that in that particular uh, part of the interview, and I said, "Oh wow, you know." And, and, and because uh, I told him, I said, uh, "Why didn't you tell me?" You know, because had I known, you know, I would have tried to, you know, I would have tried to fix my because I got like that scar tissue and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I see. You know? I saw that interview. Yes, sir. Uh-huh. That's the one I saw. Yeah, I, I can tell you. I can tell you the reason why that happened. You know, okay. like uh, yes, years ago. You know that. I, that's why I'm always trying to. You know, I always try to be like a Mister Nice Guy. Right. You know, but like, like I told you, like I met this girl, and. Uh, you know, her lifestyle at the time was open house, like, you know, people used to come up there. And she had a kid, mm-hmm. you know. And I came into her life, you know what I mean, and I tried to, like, change her, you know. So everything was doing all right, and she was really turning herself around and stuff. But there were people that resented that. That took away their, their, their freestyle stuff. Right. You know, they didn't like that, yeah, you know. So I don't know... Uh, it got to her or whatever, but I know, like one night, uh, I saw things that same thing gonna work, wasn't gonna work out and stuff. So 
So I was living in Queens at the time, so I went up and I told her, I said, listen, I said, sit down, I don't want to talk to you, you know? So she sat down and I talked to her, and I tried to explain to her that uh, there was no future in the relationship, you know? Mm-hmm. And I went on to say that, you know, you have a kid here, you know, and you shouldn't have, you know, these people coming in like as if it was their home, you know, or their house or whatever and stuff like that, you know. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm I'm trying to, so she listened. So I went in and I was bringing my stuff down, taking it down to my car. Mm-hmm. And, uh, so she said, due, due to the lateness of the hour, why not stay over, you know, and go in the morning? Mm. You know? So, boy, something tell me, said, no, no, get out of here. Go, go, you know? Mm-hmm. But I didn't go for it. I went, I said, okay, you know. So we had a few drinks, you know, and everything. And, and next thing I know, man, I saw, like, like skin on the wall and stuff, you mm. know? You threw something like in my face, man, you know. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, fortunate for me that uh, they had a, like, uh, a switch state, a police station, a switch state, and I ran in there, and they took me immediately to the sink and stopped putting water into my eyes, running water, but, you know, in my eyes. And they rushed me in the squad car to the hospital, mm-hmm. you know. And they put me in the shower immediately. And they mm. poked because they put the, the the stream, the water, directly under my face. You know, that was saved my sight. Oh, wow. I, as it were, I still couldn't see for three months. Jeez. You know? And then one, one, uh, and then one night, uh, the nurse came in. I said, oh, what beautiful air rings you have on, uh, nurse. She said, I'll cut it out, Mr. Hunter. So you know you can't see. And then I described the color. And when I described the color, she dropped her tray off, her dropped her tray and ran out and got everybody. Mm. You know, and oh, wow. Out. Yeah. But anyway, I just mentioned that. The mentor, so everybody said, are you going to have a arrest of prosecutor? Like, you know, a friend, because I... I had a friend, he he ran, you you ever heard of Shirley's Chisholm? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Well, anyway, I'm bought and I'm boss, yes. Well, my, 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 my friend brother ran against her for Congress here. You know? Oh, wow. Samuel D. Wright, you know, his brother and I were very good friends, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 and, uh, you know, he told me, you know, like he says, uh, I said, no, man, I'm not going to. You know, she has a kid and whatever and stuff like that. You know, they wanted me to, everybody wow. wanted me to, you know, to, but I didn't want to do that, you know. So anyway, uh, that's that's what happened. And that's how, so that's what the guy gave me. He shot my badge, side <laughs> like, you know, in that uh-huh. interview. And, uh, and, I would tell, and I was telling him, you know, so... So that that what happened. That's how I got the uh, the scar tissue and stuff like that. How long ago was that? What, you mean what year that was? How long ago was that? Yes, sir. Oh, that was a few years ago. That was a few years ago. Cause I was I was still, well, what they say, I was still out there then. Not out there, <laughs> but still doing my thing. Well, you know, old habits die hard, right? But wow, uh, the old habits die hard sometimes, huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I was, well, you know, so, you know, I have my car, I have my car. And like I said, this guy, brother and I, you know, like, you know, he was used to like, you know, he was married, but I wasn't at the time, you know. And uh, so we would hook up, man. We would like, you know, go to different places and stuff. But uh, I told him. I remember one time we was we was uh in a neighborhood and we were putting out flyers for his brother mm-hmm. that was running against Shirley. So we came out. Somebody came in and said Shirley Shulman is, is across the street, you know. <laughs> so I went over 
and she had a circle of people around her, man, and she was talking, and she, boy, Shirley, Shirley Chisholm, she was something else. I admired her. I liked her very much, you know. Mm -hmm. She used to tell it like it was, man, like it is or whatever. And, and, and she was speaking to the people, and then, and then when she finished speaking, you know what she said? What she said? She said, and also, I would be the first lady, black lady. She put the emphasis on, I would be the first black lady to be in Congress. <laughs> mm. Mm. I went back, I told my friend, I said, Sam is finished. <laughs> I said, Sam is finished. I said, Sam, I said, you can stop putting out these flyers and stuff, man. I said, let's go, man. <laughs> Shelly know how to do it, man. Mm. After she gets through speaking, she put the emphasis on, I will be the first, uh, like, and by the way, if, I'm, if I win, I will be the first black woman in Congress. Mm. They can't black, be there. She put the hivers on black woman, woman mm -hmm. which she was at that time, you know. Mm. <laughs> and I, I told my friend, I said, your brother, I said, Sam, we call him Sam. I said, Sam is finished. I said, <laughs> Sam is going to squash him, you know. I mm. said, Sam better give it up right now. He better concede right now to her, uh, you know. Oh wow! Yeah, he he was a city councilman up there, uh, New York City councilman, and he he decided to run against Shirley Chisholm, mm. you know. And she screamed, she did squash him, man. She 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 squashed him, that, and Sam wasn't any good after that. <laughs> wow! Know? Yeah, he went down. He got involved with some people from California. And uh, they took his law, took his license. But I read in the Amsterdam, New York Amsterdam News, a few years later, you know, sometime later, that they restored his uh, his lawyer's license. His okay. Law, you know, he he could practice law again. Mm. You know, but but surely, surely put something on him. <laughs> I heard that. Well, what happened to the woman? Did she do acid in your face with that acid? What's wrong with you? You got a low volume then. Oh, can you hear me now? I think I think your 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 uh, thing probably going battery's going down. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Oh, sorry about that. Can you hear me? Huh? Can you hear me now? I can hear you, but barely. Yeah. Oh, hold on. I guess uh, can you can you can you still hear me? Or oh, it's low still. Huh? It's still it's low. Yeah, it's still low. Yeah. I think uh, you need charging. Yeah, well, I, I guess I got to fall. I really enjoy talking to you, Brother Hunter. I thank you so much. Okay. You're quite welcome. Yeah, we'll be in touch. Nice with, yeah. to you. you too, sir. We'll be in touch very soon. Okay. All right. Have a good day. I'm thank you. To yes, sir. All right. Take care. You too. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.